Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Thursday, September the 19th, 2024. Now, in today's update, I am still watching the potential for a tropical storm, if not even a hurricane, to develop in the Gulf of Mexico. So if you're in Florida, if you're in Cuba, if you are in, say, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, and even the east coast here of Mexico, you definitely need to be watching this because this could develop pretty quickly. Also not to mention, even the Yucatan Peninsula needs to be watching this system closely too. Now, taking a look at the latest seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida, and there is that area to watch, our orange area. That has a 40% chance of tropical development in the next seven days. So that's in the next week. From now, we could still have a tropical depression or storm developing in the Gulf of Mexico. We have two other areas here that have low chances of tropical development. But what I'm also going to have to start watching closely is what comes off of Africa. There could also be another area of interest issued by the National Hurricane Center within the next couple of days for that area because maybe this gets more into the southwestern Atlantic also in the next 10 to 15 days. Now to the forecast on this Central American gyre mischief that everybody's been talking about on Twitter, also on Facebook, and any social media, including here on YouTube. So we're first looking at the GFS model. This is the surface wind plot. I always like using this in my videos because it kind of gives us an idea what the winds are doing at the surface. So this is over the next five days. You can see that Central American Gyre. Notice the winds are curving around like this. This is over the Yucatan Peninsula. Winds coming in out of the southwesterly direction over the Eastern Pacific. And so we can see this Central American Gyre spinning up a system here by Tuesday next week. Now going forward, here, the system does try to consolidate, but there's been some very wild outcomes with this. Anything between a tropical depression all the way up to a Category 5 with 180 mile an hour winds. Believe it or not, I will show you that here in this video, showing us some different model runs that were going very crazy with this. But on this one, it's only showing a tropical storm with winds of about 50 miles an hour impacting Florida. So yes, people that live in Florida need to be watching this system. This is moving all over the place. Anything from here all the way over here to even over here. Still maybe a Texas threat, maybe a Louisiana a threat also in Mississippi and Alabama. This again is moving all over the place. That's why yesterday's thumbnail had all question marks here because we just don't know where this is going to develop, when it's going to develop, and where is it going to go once it develops, right? But rest assured, we do have a system, okay? So that's what we know for sure today in the model guidance, still picking up something really big developing in the Gulf of Mexico by the middle to the end of next week. The 12Z model run was very different, and I will again show you on a more complete standpoint on the different runs that we received yesterday and today, showing us the system is wiggling around quite a bit between each run. This run showed a potential major hurricane moving into Florida. Look at that. Winds of 110, maybe 150 miles an hour impacting. Um, if you are in Tampa Bay, Florida, this would be 100, uh, 225 hours out. But again, uh, this is all over the place. So we don't know if this is actually going to happen. But it is keeping that hurricane going in the central and eastern Gulf of Mexico. Uh, near Florida. This would be a disaster over the big populated here of western Florida. And then it goes out to sea. That's what some of the models have been showing us. And then very far out, it shows maybe another major hurricane moving west. Again, that westward shift, we've been seeing that in our previous runs. And that's why um, we have to keep an eye on this area out here, this area of interest that the NHC will probably be introducing pretty soon. Now, let's look back at how uncertain how unstable this system actually is on the GFS model, all right? So this is the 18Z run. This is currently rendering right now at the moment. And in fact, me recording this video, we're at 258 frames in. So just barely 10 days into the run, and this is what we have right now. And so uh, when we go back in time, so first of all, we're going to go out to 180 hours. 
This again is the current run showing that tropical storm impacting central Florida by the end of next week. So not the end of this week, but the end of next week. That would be the 26th and the 27th. But if we go back another run, we can see it was way down here. So it went from being over here on the 18Z run to being over here just north of the Yucatan Peninsula on the, at the same exact time frame. So those are two different origin points we have to be aware of. Now going back another run is a little further to the west. And going back another run, it was much stronger. Look at this. This was very, very scary last night. The 0Z zero zero run picking up a major hurricane down to 935, 9, um, 929 millibars. Look at how low this got. This would be a very big system. This would be a Cat 5 hurricane developing on the GFS model. But now going back to the 18Z run from yesterday, showing the same thing. Uh, and so let's go, yeah, right there. Okay, and then going to the, zero, uh, the 12Z run from yesterday, uh, showing us basically the same thing. Again, that system hitting that area. So we'll see if the 0Z zero zero run goes uh, haywire on the system again tonight and shows the major hurricane in the Gulf. But this is moving all over the place. Again, you, there's just no forecast to this. This is going um, left and right and center. And until we get a consolidation, we are not going to be able to say, oh, this is going to be a hurricane or a major hurricane. But the signals are generally agreeing that we will see a tropical storm with winds of 70 miles an hour and maybe a hurricane with winds maybe of 75 to 85 miles an hour. That's what we're thinking today. And some of you are saying David's underdoing this or overdoing it. I'm going to be a little generous and I'm going to be a little more careful uh, of what I what my choice of words are because again uh, this is changing erratically there is no forecast on this we can only look at signals now the Canadian model has been super consistent on a tropical storm or hurricane forming if we go forward here on the Canadian model uh, this is five days out there is that vorticity, that spin in the atmosphere. There's that strong wind of about 40 to 50 miles an hour. But look at what happens. This goes uh, to the west. Again, most of the models, uh, even the GFS showing that little west, and then it goes that way. The Canadian showing that trend to the west as well with winds of about 40 to 50 miles an hour. But look what happens. Uh, it consolidates a little bit more, and then it might intensify to a tropical storm or even a hurricane here with winds right down here, 71 or so miles an hour. Actually, that is a hurricane. Yes, a hurricane moving onshore, 76 miles an hour in 210 hours. If we look at the previous model run, you can see it was not there. And then the 12Z run, not even there. This is the only model run. It's uh, showing that hurricane developing in the Gulf. Actually, it's been showing that, but just the timing has been really um, a lot slower now on this run. So we are seeing a slower system instead of a faster one. So still a waiting game. Now the artificial intelligence model, uh, again, the AI version of the Euro, still also showing uh, a 46 to 50 mile an hour system. And it even gets up to 55 miles an hour. So again, that tropical storm um, look here over the Gulf of Mexico uh, by the end of next week. We're again, middle of next week and until the end of next week. And like I all told you all in yesterday's video, in the previous videos, mark your calendar. Again, that 26th of September, I've been saying that for a while now, that we would have a tropical storm or hurricane in the Gulf and even in the Caribbean. And that seems to verify here so far on the models. This is a very bad news, unfortunate situation that I'm predicting here for a while that we have a big system developing in the Caribbean or in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, looking at the European model, this is not the artificial intelligence. This is the only model that's not showing much at all early on. But as we go forward through Thursday through Friday next week, it does show something developing eventually similar to Francine moving in the same area, then going up to the north. We'll see if this tries to rapidly intensify the, the, again, the intensity going up very quickly uh, because we already have winds here of 45 miles an hour. This is 10 days out. This is through Sunday morning, September the 29th. The end of September showing uh, late season or late September development here. The ICON model 
Also very similar, not as bullish on this run as it has been, but still showing the same thing. Actually pretty bullish, never mind. I was thinking of a different model showing us, uh, again, a tropical storm uh, by the 26th of September. So most of the guidance indicates uh, between September, late September 25th, through the 26th and the 27th, we have a tropical storm or if not a hurricane still in the Gulf of Mexico. But I also really want to emphasize that the GFS could still trend very back to very strong again. Um, it's not showing that the last couple of runs, the 12Z and the 18Z did not show it. Uh, the 0 6 z showed a major hurricane, and this is from last night's run, again, showing that. So this could still trend back uh, and show a very intense major hurricane with winds between about 100 to 180 miles an hour, perhaps, in the Gulf. And look at on this run, it really just crawls through the Gulf of Mexico. This would be the worst-case scenario, the most destructive scenario that we have ever witnessed this year so far actually barrel was very intense but this could be far more intense if the gfs like this comes to pass but the last two runs it has downtrended which is good news now the canadian model the environment looks really favorable that's what we've been looking at here lesser wind shear lots of moisture out there for the system to develop within so going forward we have this little trough right here this little trough that's going to be the one that increases the shear on the system but as we go into the next say four to five days the shear goes away because that trough um kind of uh, it gets evaporated so the trough evaporates and it, it just kind of disintegrates and so we're left with lighter shear very favorable outflow environment here a lot of difluence aloft and that allows the system to really uh, go bonkers now a great example is again from the zero z run from last night showing again that favorable environment with that anti-cyclonic ridge overhead that high ridge over the system allows um this disturbance to really explode rapidly we'll see if that comes to pass this would be a very unfortunate situation if it does materialize and again like we just said the shear is going to be light here's a look at the canadian model showing shear values over the next five to eight days shear anywhere between maybe five to ten knots now it looks like there's a lot of shear here but these uh these vectors are going outwards so see this the shear is going out and it's not being hit in the face on the system so the shear here is actually very light less than five to ten knots now unfortunately i've got some really bad news to share with you all still the eps on the european spaghetti plot still showing us a hurricane all these red tracks are hurricane intensity there's even a couple right here showing major hurricane intensity. So this could theoretically still become a nasty hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico based on all of the spaghetti plot. Look at all this. I mean, lots of blue, lots of red on there indicating a high-end tropical storm. Remember that to a low-grade hurricane, even a major hurricane. But also, you notice our disturbance coming off of Africa still showing signals that that develops too into a tropical depression or storm beyond the 12 day time frame but you know what this is just getting worse and worse based on the model runs that we've been getting from the gefs ensemble this is a spaghetti plot again just like the european this is even more aggressive of course it's going to be more aggressive because it's the gefs ensemble but again showing us that tropical storm developing in the central main development region it's been showing that for a while again does not surprise me if the nhc has an area of highlighting of that area but look at right over here where we have that 40 percent maybe even a 50 percent chance in the next outlook from the nhc will bring you that if it comes out in time but showing us a major hurricane all these purple tracks indicate major hurricane intensity 950 millibars there's a, in fact one model run here a couple of them showing pressures as low as 910 millibars that's going to sum it up for today's video everyone if you did enjoy the video please do not forget to hit the red subscribe button hit the thumbs up button we've been doing pretty good with the amount of likes on my recent videos anywhere between 450 to as much as 800 likes so if you haven't liked the video yet please do so help me get to my goal of a thousand likes also share this video with their family and friends, ring the bell notification icon, and I will see you back here in the next one. Peace!